Hello, in this video I will talk about Technicolor 2 Strip Technology and how to simulate it in 3D LUT Creator. As you may know, the camera sensor has three color filters, red, green, and blue. Light passes through these filters before it gets onto the sensor, and the sensor measures three color components. Thus, the color has three dimensions. This is why most LUTs are three-dimensional. If you go back a hundred years, there were no light filters in those days. The film simply recorded the brightness of a light. Also, there was an intermediate version between three-dimensional color and one-dimensional black and white representations of an image called Technicolor 2 Strip. There were only two color filters, red and green. The image consisted of two frames and, during playback, light also passed through color filters, and both images were combined on one screen. Since the color was two-dimensional, it is clear that it was impossible to transmit all available colors. Those colors that could be transmitted formed straight lines on the color plane. For example, the line between red and green colors. Let's try to imitate it in 3D LUT Creator. For this reason, I will change the value of the blue channel to zero. And now look at the image. There are green colors that pass through the green filter, red colors pass through the red filter, and there is yellow color which is a mixture of green and red. Now look at vector scope. From the top view, this is not so noticeable. When I switch it to a 3D mode, it is seen that all colors in the image merge into one plane. Since it is impossible to get white color and neutral colors in this system, I assume that the second filter was not pure green, but rather turquoise, so that when mixing red and turquoise, neutral color was obtained. To simulate this, I will record the information from the green channel in the blue channel. Now I see two opposite colors, red and cyan, which, when combined, allow you to get neutral colors. Let's take a look at vector scope. The color is also projected onto one plane. And the top view shows that all colors merge into one line. So I've got a two-dimensional color. Now I will show you which tools in 3D LUT Creator can make even more color variety in this system. Perhaps you have noticed there are buttons for increasing and decreasing the saturation, as well as buttons for turning the color hue. With saturation, everything is more or less clear. If I click on Sat minus, the saturation will decrease. If I click on Sat Plus, the saturation is going to increase. With Hue, everything is more interesting. If I rotate Hue of a two-dimensional color, the color will remain two-dimensional, but it will change its hue. For example, I can rotate points so that the colors are orange and blue. Or yellow and blue. As you can see, the points of the channel mixer move along complex trajectories but the color remains two-dimensional. That is, it is projected onto one line. If I turn off gamma correction and put gamma one, then this will be a straight line. So with the help of the hue buttons, I can rotate the hue, getting the color pair I need. For example, purple and green, or orange and blue. I can get the combination that best suits my image. Why do I need it? The fact is that the removal of the third color component sharply narrows the variety of colors in the photograph. You have probably often heard the advice that if you can't make your photo look good in color, convert it to black and white. This color correction is an intermediate option which allows you to remove the color chaos but still retain some colors. As you can see, the original photo has many different colors, green, yellow, red, orange, and even pink. Translating the color into two-dimensional color immediately reduces picture colors to two colors, and they are complementary to one another. All of you have heard about the popularity of teal-orange grading. This grading solves the same problem, simplifying the perception of the image by reducing the number of colors on it. So, I showed what hue plus and hue minus buttons do. It can be said that these buttons change the hue of color filters through which the image is projected onto the screen. That is, in this case, one filter is orange and the other one is blue. As you remember, there are two more filters which are used by the camera during shooting. With these buttons, I can change their hues. If I hold Shift and press Hue Plus, as you can see, the resulting colors remain. 
but the way they are distributed over the photo changes. Now, the skin tone is projected through the orange filter, and the color of foliage is projected through the blue filter. If I hold down Shift and press Hue Plus, the skin will be shown through the blue filter. If I press Hue Minus, the color border between orange and blue will turn, and now the green is projected through the orange filter. Thus, you can choose not only two colors in which your photo will be repainted, but also select which colors will be painted in one shade and which in the other. And the third thing you can do with two-dimensional colors in Channel Mixer is to select all points and move the entire system. As you can see, everything remains the same. Color separation remains also, but the balance of brightness of colors changes. This effect is very similar to the work of the Volume tool in 3D LUT Creator. If I move all points towards red, colors containing red are lightened and others are darkened. Or vice versa, if I move points towards blue, warm colors are darkened and cold colors are lightened. In this way, you can select the brightness balance before and after. This effect radically changes any pictures and it shouldn't be overused. However, if it is used with caution, it will help to sort out the variety of extra colors and will even out the skin tone as the color variability of the skin will be greatly reduced. I go to the Mask tab and reduce this effect in Master section, before and after. Let's try it on another photo. Here it is before, here it is after. I reset all the settings. Mix green channel with blue channel. Turn the color a little to get magenta. Move points towards red in order to slightly increase the brightness. And then I rotate the line of color separation. I will switch off gamma correction and turn hues to yellow. I borrowed this style from films of the 1920s. I will weaken the effect a little. Before. After. There is one more nuance I forgot to mention. I will return the effect to 100%. As a result of operating Channel Mixer, only two colors remain on the image. White balance, that is applied before Channel Mixer, will also shift colors, but only within these two shades. That is, with the help of white balance, I can adjust color distribution between red and turquoise. You can get teal orange toning in Lightroom by moving red and blue sliders in Camera Calibration Tool. However, only in 3D LUT Creator, you can easily determine which color in the photo is going to become orange and which is going to become blue. I hope this lesson was useful to you. Thank you for your attention. As a bonus, I decided to show you how to get a teal orange grading on the following picture. I'm combining blue and green channels, then turning hue to get the desired skin color. Now I'm rotating the color separation line so that the lips do not look cold. I shift neutrals to blue using white balance. I will increase the saturation a little. I'm going to apply a contrast curve. I will slightly turn points to fix the color of lips. I'm going to move all points to brighten the face. I will bring white balance back a little in order to restore warmth to the face and turn hue a bit. I'm switching off gamma correction, before and after. Thank you for all your attention. And that's all for now. Goodbye.